Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I'm midway through a project and I thought you might find it interesting, so I'm not going to go back and reinstall everything, but I am going to show you a couple of the things that are going on here. I frequently get questions about the Tsunami Shield, which is a solid uh, aluminum side-plated bodied reel, and folks ask me what I think about them, and they're nice reels. Uh, this one came in, it was project previewed because it had a bad drag stack. Uh, the owner was claiming that it... Uh, it skipped from time to time, and I took that apart. It's a carbon fiber system. Uh, the grease in there was very, very thick. I don't know if that was Tsunami's grease. I'm going to assume it is, but uh, it was starting to accumulate some stuff. Even though it's a waterproof system, it was accumulating a lot of stuff, like uh, sand or sea salt or something. They became sticky, and I could see that uh, it would cause it to... Uh, have a, uh, a drag effect of skipping. So I took this off. I'll just show you a little bit about it. Took that off. Tsunami has a tool. If you don't have this tool, don't even start working on this reel. Uh, everything is non-standard. So they have these two prongs that belong in the, the little... Uh, you got to push your piece through there. There's two little tabs. It sits in there. It comes off in a clockwise direction. That gives you your drag stack below. And then in the drag stack, it was all gummy and gooey, and I could see exactly why uh, this customer was having the problem that he was having. So I, I fixed that. I, I cleaned the drags, as you've seen me do numerous times on different reels. It has this traditional setup. It has the, uh, the three drag washers, the three metals, and it has the two keyed and the one eared washer. And then I started taking the reel apart, just saying, you know, he said that there was a problem with that drag stack, but why don't we go ahead and show everybody an inside look at this reel. And again, if you don't have this tool, uh, don't, even, don't even attempt this. It comes in the box with uh, the Tsunami reel. If you bought the reel secondhand, I guess you can go and get that tool somewhere. But uh, it's just funky all around. It's almost like they don't want you to work on the reel. So I decided I was going to take this reel apart and give you an inside look. Now there's the aluminum body is treated uh, as a single mold piece. And what happens there is they give you access from two side plates. Now I removed the one that's the gear side plate, but it's identical on this side as well. And then you do that, interestingly enough, in a, by turning it clockwise. And as you can tell, when you open up the handle, you got this four circular thing and it's it's on the back end of the tool here and you're going to turn in a clockwise direction to loosen which means you're going to turn counterclockwise when you go to uh, to reinstall. Now I don't know why they did this but the five and the six thousand it's a clockwise removal and in the three and the four thousand it's counterclockwise so if you're having trouble I can understand why. Also these things are torqued down tremendously. I had to use this plus the uh, 13 millimeter wrench to give me the power to actually lever this. So just be aware clockwise on a 5 and a 6,000 and you're not going to break that nut easily. That's because it's got a water seal in there. In this case you can see the reel's been used a lot. It's got some salt stuff accumulated here. Those undoubtedly jammed the, uh, the tracks when I was trying to remove it and that made it all the more difficult. So what I'm going to do now is just going to take some WD-40 to dissolve that stuff and just let it sit over on the side and then I'll show you the rest of it. So I took off the pinion gear housing which has the anti-reverse mechanism in it. I'm not going any further than this. This is not part of what I was asked to do but you have a uh, a pinion gear and an anti-reverse collar and this holds it together and again unless you have that chop tool it's going to remove that pinion gear you know what they say don't attempt this at home so I took that off I put a couple of drops of oil into the bearing I've already done that underneath and then let's just make sure we're going the right way here because that's hard to see Yep, we go, this one goes on and <laughs> make, go figure. Some of, some of the reel is clockwise tightened, some is not. And then this would be the piece underneath. So you have an anti-reverse uh, mechanism here. You have a, a pinion gear and a bearing up top. 
On the back end of this, you can see I cleaned it up. I'm not going to show you what I did in terms of cleaning, but you have a the bottom end of your pinion gear comes through. It was cleaned and it was lubed. Same thing here. You have a traditional cross wind block and a traditional cross wind uh, gear behind it. So I pulled this out earlier just so I could give you that look. Let's go ahead and put that back in. I've cleaned the shaft. We're just going to put a little bit of grease on there. And then we're going to reinstall the top end of this. Oops, not going to do that yet. The rotor goes on next. You've got a lot of rubber seals on this one. It's all intended to keep the water out. And I say intended because when I opened up this case, boy, did I have a lot of stuff in there. I don't know how it penetrated, but I had sand and I had dried salt and I had other things that I found in there. All right, we'll put the burning shield back on. I was hiding underneath the rotor. And then we'll just find the proper orientation of the rotor onto the pinion gear. And again, you get a tight fit there because of that um, water seal there, that uh, pretty in the pink thing. And then this was a counterclockwise, if I recall. Yep, you can counterclockwise to tighten this one. So again, go figure. Not quite sure what that's all about, but that's the way it's designed. So some of them are and some of them aren't. Okay, and then I had a hold down screw for that uh, rotor nut. So let's go ahead and put that hold, hold down screw back together. So I haven't been able to make a judgment. I don't think that these are CNC cut gears at all. I know that's a big thing in this level of reel. But here's your main gear. And you can see I've already got pitting on there. So that tells me this is just um, what I call pot metal. But I could be corrected if anybody knows what it is. And then look at this stuff that's on there. So if you're in a watertight reel, what is going on here? I, I just, I don't, that's a rhetorical question. I don't have an answer. And uh, just be aware, the same thing happened underneath here. Now I've gone ahead and I've uh, lubed this, and I was actually spinning it before, so just to make sure. Traditional uh, cross wind block drive on the back, traditional uh, main gear kind of thing, nothing fancy in terms of offsets. Also has a bearing on this side and a bearing on the other side. I've previously oiled them, both below and now here. And what you want to do then is you want to take your Axle shaft then, put that in, feed that through your cross wind block. In this case I gotta pull it up a little bit, I'm gonna use my pick for that. As long as your uh, your main drive and that isn't in there, you can just kind of push this thing and it'll follow you. And then there's a little screw here that was the cross wind block screw. So we'll go ahead and put that in. Simply insert it in the. Oops, lost that one. So this is a little unusual in that it has the uh, the solid cross wind arm. And typical of me in small parts, I do apologize. Okay, so you just want to grab that small screw then. Get it started here. We have an alignment there, so let's go ahead and put the screw in. Looks like I've got something picked up on my screwdriver here from the, the desk. Tighten that down, and then you need the clearance, so you need to come down on this. I guess I must be top dead center with that. There you go. You want to slide this down to mount your main gear. If uh, if that was up, you would be bumping that cross wind block. And it just goes in, very simple. So this is going to be driven by the pinion gear. That's going to drive the cross wind block. Assembly goes in. And then we have the star of the show, I guess. Uh, we have that seal. All of these come with the water seals. So I'll give them credit for that. There's a lot of 
water seals in here. Again, I don't know how we had some uh, intrusion there, but we certainly did. And then this goes on in a counterclockwise rotation, which is your normal off. And you can see now that you've got that water seal or O-ring is uh, holding that up there. And you just have to continue with this until you press that O-ring into the case. And I was ready to tell a fella, look, I got the uh, got your drag service, but I don't have the tool. And sure enough, I had the box sitting here to the side, and I didn't even pay attention. So uh, the tool was in there, thank goodness. So again, if you have one of these, if you have happened to purchase it uh, uh, secondhand, and you certainly want to make sure that you have this tool if you're going to go work on this wheel. There we go. I'm just about seated now. You can see the red line is gone. And again, an aluminum case always makes me a little nervous because I'm afraid I'm going to fracture it. But uh, in this case, I use the, the lever, the extended arm here, rather than tearing my arm up. I was kind of doing it like this, and those prongs were just digging right into my flesh here. So that's your um, that's your tsunami. Let's just go ahead and put the handle on. So inside, the technology is not very different from uh, from a reel of this quality from just about any manufacturer. It's the traditional design in terms of the, the main gear and crosswind block and the like. And uh, the only thing that uh, varies with this one is that you have the... This is going in backwards. Yep, of course. Uh, Counterclockwise on that one. All right, so there you go. That's, uh, that's your reel. Spins like a champ, works nicely. The drag is now tight, so uh, we're in good condition with that. And uh, that's a review, preview, and a little bit of an insight into how to service this reel uh, without the full take apart, but you didn't miss much there, just uh, the inverse of how we installed it. Before we go, I want to thank our first responders, essential personnel, hospital workers, healthcare, and the like. Uh, and everybody who's on the front lines helping us fight this pandemic. Without your efforts, we would be in far worse shape. It's all appreciated, and uh, we thank you for that. For those of us that aren't the first-line responders, well, that's our job to, to do the things that are being asked of us in terms of wearing the face coverings, maintaining our social distance, being careful in terms of... Uh, washing our hands and the like. So please pay attention to the authorities and what they're asking us to do and we all will get through this together. If you uh, have questions, please leave them in the comments, whether it's about this reel or any other reel. Uh, if you would like to have a real service, please contact me on email. And more importantly, if you'd like to continue to see videos like this, then uh, please subscribe uh, and you won't miss any of my posts because I do post frequently. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.